Suzuki Satoru felt that it would be better to save the energy of hunting down various people to learn about the situation, and instead hand that task to the bard. In the case of merchants, bards would be less likely to arouse their suspicion than they would, and the bard would also be a better judge of whether or not their information was reliable. In other words, Suzuki Satoru had paid that large sum just now, in order to get the bard on his side, and ensure that he threw himself wholeheartedly into his task of gathering information. I understand. Then I shall take my leave for today. Very well. Ah, uh, yes, given that your size is similar to ours, may I ask where you are lodging? I see. Well, it's true that most of the guests the city entertains tend to be on the large side. I reside in an inn operated by the guild. Then it seems we won't be able to go there. I understand. In that case, can we invite you here again in three days' time? Certainly. Leave it to me. The bard left the inn in a cheerful mood. People with deep pockets lightened his footsteps considerably. After closing the room door, Kino looked excitedly at Suzuki Satoru. Look how confident he was. He was really good. Yes, he was. It was most likely correct since Kino had said so. I'm not sure if it's because I became undead, but I don't feel moved by works of art. The similarly undead Kino had been swayed by the song however, so that was probably not the reason. Still, Suzuki Satoru could not help thinking along those lines. Kino continued talking without having noticed what Suzuki Satoru was thinking. Perhaps the normal Kino might have sensed what was on her companion's mind, but now she was too excited to care about such things. Well I look forward to three days later I don't think he'll reach that standard just now if he writes a new song. Hmm, I guess. He might have been voicing agreement, but Suzuki Satori did not understand those songs of all. Kino narrowed her eyes and looked at him. Liar. Forget it, I'll let you off this time. So, will we be strolling through streets afterwards? That was the original plan, but... Suzuki Satori looked out the window, which was glazed with thick glass that did not let much light through. The sun's already gone down. We spent quite a while listening to him. I'm sorry. It's all because I... No no no. Don't get me wrong, Kino, I'm not complaining about you. Being able to lose yourself in such wonderful music is a pleasure one rarely gets to enjoy. All I was saying was that it would be better if we could keep better track of time. And besides, even if it's late, it just means you can't go out. Kino puffed up her cheeks and pouted. Isn't that because I'm not grown up? I've got it, what about lying that I'm from a race that's already of age? It was not impossible in theory. After all, much like the large races who frequented the sin, there were also small races. Well, it was impossible to tell that Kino was a child based on her height, it would be impossible to successfully bluff with her delicate petite features. Surely her plan would cause a lot of trouble. The gate guards probably would not pursue the matter due to feeling guilty about confusing the old bones with the undead, but if they did not show them the appropriate appreciation to them, they would probably get suspicious again. Also, one could tell if someone was of age by looking at their faces, even if they were small. However, it was usually only those races who were similar to each other, that could tell the difference by their looks. For instance, a demi-human smile might be taken as intimidation by a humanoid. In any case, if they insisted that Kino was an adult, the demi-humans might not be able to tell, but most of the humanoids probably would not buy it. There's a lot of humanoids in this city, so it won't work. Then what about wearing a mask? How suspicious do you want to make them, anyway? That's true. Wearing a mask out on the street would invite suspicious looks from passers-by, unless they were conducting some kind of religious festival. In fact, Suzuki Satori's visage had already drawn many eyes, and if not for that one time where he had tried and failed to use illusions to conceal his features, he would not have wanted to go around exposing his face either. We can try it the next time we go to a place with few or no humanoids. I guess it counts as an experiment in seeing if people buy that excuse. Kino looked like she had just blossomed. But not this time. Kino's face tensed up again. Ooh, ah, Satoru. I'm not falling for that. Besides, how would people look at me if I brought a kid around with me on the main road at night? The fact was, Suzuki Satoru's words would not be completely accurate if he were walking around in the pauper's district, where stray children could be seen everywhere. Going around there in beat-up clothes would earn a glance at most. But given that Kino was dressed in clean clothes, it would draw a lot of attention. Even if the security on the main streets was good, it would be a different matter entirely at night. In addition, it would also be very problematic if Kino was in rags. If some child in tatters was walking around with a normally dressed adult, the latter would probably be taken for some degenerate pervert who had bought himself a child prostitute. Naturally, Suzuki Satori did not want to be thought of as such a person. Definitely not. But in that case, how could he let Kino walk around naturally on the night streets? The answer was that Suzuki Satori and Kino would both have to dress shabbily. That way, the people in the pauper's district probably would not mind them. However, they had arranged to meet someone tonight, so that route was out too. 
Therefore, he could not go out with Kino tonight. Still, given the circumstances, all Suzuki Satoru and Kino needed to do was to move separately. As long as she dressed up in rags, Kino could walk down the streets at night without drawing attention. And while Kino was small of frame, she was still a vampire. Her physical attributes far exceeded those of an average adult. Combined with the improvement in her magical abilities over the past five years, she ought to be able to handle anything that came up. On top of that, she had the magic item Suzuki Satoru had lent her, so she would still be able to flee, even if Kino came up against someone stronger than her. However, neither of them wanted to go out and be a magnet for trouble. The undead were the enemies of the living, if a problem came up, nobody would listen to them. But, I understand how you feel and I know you must be unhappy about this. But I must still insist that you stay here tonight until the sun comes up again. Suzuki Satoru knew what Kino was thinking. Boring nights were hard to pass for the undead, who did not need to sleep or rest. In addition, the city at night looked quite interesting, one could see many scenes that were dramatically different from the daytime. While it was sometimes more dangerous, that just made it more exciting, especially when said dangers were utterly inconsequential to the two of them, and experiencing those thrills was still very fun. Kino, haven't I been telling you this all this time? Whenever we first come to town, we have to stay put at night before we figure out the situation. Besides, Kino might have enough fighting power to defend herself, but an encounter with a hero-level enemy was still very dangerous. All this time, he had always made her stay put until he was sure that there was nothing in the city that she could not handle. Then you should stay and talk to me, Sator. In the past five years, they had passed the nights when the sun was absent from the sky by talking. Not needing to rest meant that they had more time together in terms of human relationships, it was as though they had traveled with each other for ten odd years. That was also why he had adopted such a plan. Perhaps on normal days he might have given in and acceded to her, but today, Suzuki Satoru stood firm and shook his head. That's a good idea too, but I'll be doing what I always do, gathering information from the streets at night. Kino looked at him with a baffled expression on her face. Huh. Don't you usually learn about the situation in the day? Yes, normally I would, but I'm very bored today. You jerk. That's why I need you to stay at home, and mind the house little Miss Kino. Do you understand? Fine, I get it. I'll go read some of the research notes we swiped. If I have to do any experiments, you have to help me, okay? But of course. The research notes they had recovered from the members of Corpus of the Abyss were all along the lines of enhancing their skills to dominate more powerful undead, learning how to cast spells of higher tiers, enhancing the attributes of the undead and so on. Therefore, Kino had thrown herself into the role of backing up Suzuki Satoru, in the hope that completing one of those topics might end up strengthening Suzuki Satoru. Sadly, none of their attempts had succeeded. However, that was in Suzuki Satori's case. Kino herself had benefited from them. It seemed like she had gotten a little stronger. In fact, she who originally lacked the ability to dominate the undead, now possessed such an ability. From the perspective of Yggdrasil's racial and job class systems, that should have been impossible. In that case, why had it not worked on Suzuki Satori? There were two possibilities. One was that Suzuki Satori could no longer learn new abilities in other words, he was complete. The other was that more in-depth research was required to strengthen someone at Suzuki Satori's level. In any case, this research could not be done by Suzuki Satori himself, and so Kino found enjoyment in diving headlong into that work. Suzuki Satori left Kino with a do your best. It seemed to make her very unhappy and left their room. Along the way, Suzuki Satori who had no choice but to hide his face with an illusion and change his clothes, opened the indicated door leading to his store, and he was mildly surprised. This was a bar. However, this did not look like the restaurant at night from the inn, and neither did it look like a hostess bar, but rather a place where customers could sample fine wines in peace in other words, a high-class establishment. It was an extremely classy place, and the atmosphere was something else entirely. I see. Suzuki Satoru understood why they had to meet here. He had never entered such a place during their journey. As one of the undead who could not eat or drink, Suzuki Satori would naturally not need to go there, to say nothing of bringing along Kino, who looked like a child. Even in his previous world, he had only been to places like these twice, in order to entertain clients. In other words, Suzuki Satori had no idea how to behave here. However, the show had to go on. It would be bad if he embarrassed himself here. Just as Suzuki Satori was at a loss, an attendant in a stylish outfit walked up to him. Welcome. The attendant bowed. Before the man had approached him, Suzuki Satori sensed that he had been sizing up his outfit. If he had not made the grade for entering the bar, he would probably have been politely asked to leave. In other words, he had made it through the door. As a precaution, he had changed his clothes after hearing about the atmosphere inside this place. It would seem that had been the right thing to do. 
Still, he should not mention that he had changed in the middle of the street under the cover of Perfect Unknowable. He looked inside the darkened bar doing so was no problem for Suzuki Satoru, who was undead and saw a man sitting on a sofa waving to him. He was a man with a keen gaze, and his clothes clearly showed off his muscular body. He had a crystalline horn on his head. He was one of the humanoids known as the Sharp Horns.